What's up, Nail Geeks, and welcome back to another Rogue Lacquer video. I am super stoked for this collection. I don't know about all of you, but I am ready for some bright colors. Um, I am ready for spring. Spring and summer are my favorite types of nail polish colors. The palettes, um, pastels. I'm always hoping to see some pastels, and I love me some bright colors, and I'm just ready for it, and Rogue is pulling the curtain back of winter and gloomy sort of days. So I'm here for this set. We have a wonderful eight piece set inspired by Alice in Wonderland. And there are two sets or rather there's two parts to this collection. One four piece set that's part one. And then there's the other four piece set that's part two. Now the real difference between them is uh, one has that heavier rogue like flaky uh, finish to the polishes and then the other one's a little bit more I guess um, new sort of rogue finishes. When I asked Rachel to clarify this a little bit more so I could talk more about it on the video intro what does that mean and she said that part one is just it's her it's it's more back to what rogue lacquer's roots are and if you're new to the community, if you're new to Indie Polish, um, Rogue Lacquer is known for her flaky finishes. They're not chunky per se. They're these just chaotic, beautiful mixtures of these, these flakes, these pieces of just, just pieces of color, I guess, is what I'm looking for. And it, they're, they're beautiful. And I'm really excited to see, like, I feel like that first part definitely made me think of this is what I expect from Rogue Lacquer. So I was really pleasantly surprised to see it. And of course, of course, the uh, other part, the second part is just as wonderful, too. But I'm, I'm definitely here for Rogue's uh, signature finishes, if you will. So these are going to be launching very, very soon. And let's check them out. Let's dive right in and see what they got. And first up is Bread and Butterflies. This is described as a buttery curly with magenta, orange, purple, UCC flakes, and lightly scattered hollow sparkle. This is what I would consider a very nude, almost beige type base color. It gives off that nice clean slate sort of spring appearance. The flakes are of the medium and smaller sizes, so you'll get that nice shredded appearance on your nails. It does have a very creamy formula to it. It self-leveled very well on the nail which was pretty impressive given that the flakes are more of that metallic, heavier type. I'm going to suggest three light to normal coats on this and a good glossy top coat. I didn't see any texture or anything with this one, but I would suggest going in with a thicker glossy top coat. And here is Dandelions. This is a pale yellow curly with gold and orange glass flakes and black metallic flakes. This is a lovely sunny yellow. I really, really, really liked this one. This is, it's almost... It's not quite as neon as say like, like a Peeps marshmallow, but it's just sunny and very pleasant. It almost has a pastel vibe to the base color itself. And this is chock full of flakes. This is that type of rogue finish. I really appreciate. There is iridescent flakes that give it this warm type of glow. You can see a bit of that on my finger wiggle there. And you also get that nice scattered shredded appearance from the little black flakes here too. Now this one does have a lot of thirstiness and texture to it because of the flakes. So I would suggest a glitter smoother and a glossy top coat. And here is Dizzy Daffodils. This is another one of my favorites. This is a pink curly with gold and orange glass and black metallic flakes. Another like incredibly flattering pink. This is so pretty. And I think it would look so chic with a Skittle Manny with dandelions. Anyways, this also has that heavier, creamier type formula that Dandelions had, and I think two to three coats. Honestly, even though I had my falsies on the longer side for this video, I thought two coats was great. Two normal coats for me. I tend to polish a little heavy handed, so keep that in mind. This also has that texture and thirstiness, so Glitter Smoothing Top Coat is going to be your friend on most of these that have this heavier, creamier type of formula to them. This pink is going to be universally flattering. And speaking of universally flattering, this is Dog and Caterpillars, described as a teal curly with glowing green glass and black metallic flakes. Another creamy, smooth, curly type formula. This one leans just a touch more on the jelly side, which I totally get as 
The flakes in this one did feel a touch heavier than, say, dandelions and dizzy daffodils. This is lovely. It's like an ocean type of mosaic on your nails. So much flaky action. This is another one that I stopped at two coats, two normal coats for me and use a glitter smoother and a glossy top coat. And it's just so pretty. Medium to deep skin tones. This is one of those mermaidy sort of colors that I think is going to pop so ridiculously well. And next up, we've got Get Up in the Morning Glory. This is described as a purple curly with turquoise flecks and multi-shaped iridescent glitters. So this has the lightest formula across the entire collection. And it's got more of a milky, almost, vibe to it. I wouldn't quite classify it as that nice milky sort of finish, but it builds like a jelly. So you're going to see just the slightest bit of your free edge if you have a very prominent smile line. Otherwise, I think this is a little bit more opaque than say a milky crelly, but how many times can I say that? Anyways, it's on the lighter side in terms of formula. I think three coats, a glitter smoother and a glossy top coat will fit the best for this as the glitters give it just a tiny bit of grittiness and you want to get that ultra jello like appearance. So definitely gloss this one up and smooth it out. And here is Lazy Daisies, another one of my top picks, described as an antique toned cream with gold metallic and glass flakes. Now, to me, at least to my eyes, when I was watching this one, I personally thought that the base color itself is really flirting with being a stark white. However, there is this antique wedding dress sort of look with this. This is such a beautiful color. I love white curlies when they have some type of colorful aspect to them, but I also really like white curlies when they have a gold aspect to them. This is just so delicate and springy. It's self-leveled really well. This has that creamier, heavier type of formula to it. So I think three light coats to plump it up is gonna work the best and a glitter smoother and glossy top coat. And Rocking Horse Fly is a purple curly with aqua blue glass flakes and black metallic flakes. So to me, this one would look really cool skittled with dog and caterpillars, that mermaidy sort of teal. This also builds up very well. It does have that creamy smooth formula that the other heavier ones had. I feel like three very thin coats works the best with these. Yes, you could absolutely get away with two coats on some of these, and I did. But on the heavier ones, I think that just going in incredibly thin is another really good method to make sure that you have a ton of flaky payoff. And as you can see from my full hand shot there, it's absolutely worth it. There's a lot of depth because of those iridescent flakes in each of their respective finishes. And then we've got the fun black flakes to go and just kind of speckle everything up. Just a really nice springy vibe. And then last but not least, we've got the month of June. This is a pale aqua curly with small copper to bronze ultra chameleon chrome flakes and lightly scattered hollow sparkle. Okay, so this one to me would be the sibling to get up in the morning glory. It's got more of a true jelly type of formula to it, but it does lightly flirt with being a milky type finish. I think three coats, three normal coats is going to work the best with this one. It also self levels very well, very cream like, but again, it builds and feels more jelly like on the brush strokes. This gave me really good, satisfying cleanup lines. I enjoyed cleaning up this one. It just, the formula was really nice. Finish with a good glossy top coat and you're good to go. And we're going to wrap up the video with the Willet Topper segment. This is where I use a black swatch stick to demonstrate if polishes have layering capabilities. Okay, so we have a lot of Krellies and Jellies here. Some of these work, some of them maybe not. Bread and Butterflies, I personally didn't care for it over black. Dandelions, along with, spoiler alert, the other heavier flaky finishes or rather dense formulas, these all work. But please note their respective base colors are heavily, heavily tinted. So I think they do look well and popping over black. If you do any other color, I would really suggest sticking with their matchy match colors. I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling a certain way about these over black as toppers. Yes, it works. And that's more of a technical answer. But these creamier type of crellies, I just feel like you need to just wear them by themselves. So I don't know your preference. And you can see here, very, very tinted, very dense in terms of their formula for the most part, but you do get a lot of flaky action. So I think you might be able to play up with some of these, but I don't know. My preference, I would not topper these. They're wonderful the way they are. I think rogue flakes are just in a classification of their own. 
Okay, so across the board, you can grab them individually for 12 each or in their respective quads for 44 for the set. I will have the collage images around my head here so you can see which ones belong to part one and then which ones belong to part two. Um, but overall, all eight polishes are cohesive and are in the same collection. So they are going to be launching February 25th at 12 p.m. Mountain Time. I'm going to link you guys below to Rogue Lacquer's website in addition to the Facebook group if you want to see sneak peeks, interact with the maker and all that good stuff. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.